Hello everyone and welcome to our newest Flux tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to use TVS diodes and other ESD suppression mechanisms in your PCB layout. Now, if you're using a design that has a connector, such as a USB connector, it's a good idea to add ESD protection. Sometimes when a connector is exposed to the external environment, it can receive a strong pulse and that pulse can drive a current into your integrated circuits or other components and then it can damage those components. So we're gonna run over how to place TVS diodes and then I'll provide a brief comparison with some other components that can be used to suppress ESD. Make sure to hop into Flux and follow along. So one thing that we often see from a lot of projects that are made on the Flux platform is that these projects often use a connector. And of course, when that connector is exposed to the external environment, or if you grab the device by the connector, it is possible to experience ESD or electrostatic discharge. This can then drive a strong voltage and current pulse into the device, which then causes some of the components to be damaged or fail. So a really common case is if you're using a connector like a USB connector. And in fact, in the USB standard, there are provisions for adding TVS diodes to this type of channel. So let's just suppose for a moment that I have this uh, mini B USB 2.0 connector, and I want to interface it with something like the CP2102. So to interface these two components. It's really simple, of course. You just drag your components into the schematic and then you start wiring up uh, these terminals. But uh, we would like to make sure that if this device is placed into the field that there's not going to be uh, any sort of ESD pulse that could damage this CP2102 component. Now, how would we do that? Well, there are a few components that get added to these lines uh, the D plus and the D minus line uh, on the USB connector in order to help prevent ESD um, and suppress any ESD uh, pulse that is received from then reaching over to this processor. So what are our options? Well, we have a few different options. Um, the first and most common option is a TVS diode. And if you look at a manufacturer like Borns, you will see that they have many different TVS diodes. They have an entire line of these diodes. These diodes act similar to a standard diode. They can be run in forward bias or reverse bias. Um, and then they come in two varieties. One is unidirectional and one is bidirectional. The other option is to use something like a gas discharge tube. So a gas discharge tube, um, sometimes called a surge arrester, is for much higher voltages. And I'll discuss both of these components here. So TVS diodes. TVS diodes are very simple. The way that they're wired up is if we want to use a TVS diode, let's say on the D plus line, um, first all I would want to do is just drag this in. And we need to rotate it properly. So I'm going to rotate it right. And so for this one to be used on the D plus line, I would basically want to place it and wire it up just like this. And then I would want to put the ground terminal on the other uh, pin. Just drag it in here and set it and then wire it. And now we have provided ESD protection to this component. So the reason I place uh, this close to the connector in the schematic is because it should actually be placed close to the connector in the PCB layout. So that's an important point to remember, is if you're going to use this TVS diode, we want to place it close to the connector in the PCB layout. Now, an important point with these TVS diodes is that normally, if you look at an application circuit and you have a circuit that's just going to run at, say, 5 volts, and then you need to protect that circuit from ESD, it's appropriate to use a TVS diode to then make that connection. So this would actually be better to use just on the V bus line rather than the uh, D plus line and the D minus line. But if we have a situation with a differential pair where the polarity switches between positive and negative, we actually want to use a different type of TVS diode. We want to use a bidirectional TVS diode. So bidirectional TVS diodes are essentially back-to-back -back TVS diodes in a series. 
And so if I just drag this thing in, um, you actually have a TVS diode array here. But what I could do is I could then, let's say, take the D plus line, connect it to this terminal. I can copy the ground and then place the ground here and then connect it to this terminal. I could then connect the D minus line over to this other terminal and that will protect both of these lines together. So what's happening here is this V bus line on this uh, USB connector is going to be powered up to 5 volts. So when it's powered up to 5 volts, we want to make sure that the connection over to the power pin on this CP2102 is going to remain at 5 volts. Now this particular unidirectional TVS diode breaks down at 6 volts. So the second that this VBUS line exceeds 6 volts, this will be driven into reverse bias and will start to break down. And so that's going to shunt any current that comes in here from an ESD pulse back to ground and prevent it from going over to this component. Same idea here for the D plus and the D minus line. Now, this is a 3v3 bidirectional TVS diode, so it's actually designed to protect a 3v3 line like a USB line. Um, so you have to choose that uh, voltage very carefully here because you have to consider what voltages you need to protect these components against in the PCB layout should an ESD pulse occur. So these uh, components have a voltage specification that you have to ca uh, pay attention to. And so if you look at a data sheet for a typical TVS diode, if you look at this data sheet, you will see that they have a peak pulse power value that they can withstand without blowing. And then they also have a wor uh, working peak reverse voltage. So this working voltage is the voltage that you want to protect against from entering this system. So here, this particular component at 16 volts, we wouldn't want to use this to protect a 5 volt line necessarily because it's possible that the 5 volt line gets powered up to too high of a voltage when ESD occurs and then it fails to shunt the current back to ground fast enough. So that's one of the important points here is to choose this TVS diode voltage carefully to ensure that you don't unintentionally shunt or intentionally shunt your uh, ESD pulse to ground. The other specification here that's actually pretty important is there's a capacitance associated with these diodes. So these diodes are capacitors and they have a capacitance value. And what that's going to do is it's going to determine how fast it's able to shunt one of these pulses back to the ground terminal. So that's also important because if one of these pulses comes in and stays at too high of a pulse value for too long, then the diode can heat up or other components in the path of that pulse can heat up and then they can be damaged as well. So both specifications are important and the specifications you have to prioritize really depend on the environment that the device is going to be working in. Typically though with a small handheld device like something that's going to use this USB port we would care more about the reverse working voltage specification because we want to ensure that if this uh, line is operating at 5 volts, we choose something that's just a little bit above that. That way we don't drive this uh, diode into reverse bias when the device is working normally, but it does get driven into reverse bias very quickly if there's an ESD event. Now let's just compare this with something like a surge arrestor or a gas discharge tube. Now, remember, these are just diodes, and they come in a standard package. They're normally surface mounted, but there are larger ones that can be through hole mounted. But if we look at something like a surge arrestor, these are actually through hole components um, because they are a bit large, as you can see here from this mechanical drawing, um, and they're meant to withstand much higher voltages. Um, so the through-hole nature of these components means that, of course, they are going to be a bit bulkier on the PCB, and they should only be used in cases where you're dealing with a high voltage. And you can actually see right here that they do have a voltage rating. That is the DC spark over voltage. And this particular voltage for this component is 230 volts. You can also see that they have a pretty wide tolerance on them. So plus or minus 20%. I mean, that means this thing could spark over at a voltage as high as 276 volts just by looking at this specification. So that's another important point to note.
These also have a capacitance. The capacitance defines how fast this uh, uh, surge arrestor will spark on and then divert a high voltage or a high current uh, pulse back to ground. And it's actually common to see both of these on the same circuit if this device is going to be working in an environment where it might be exposed to a voltage as high as 230 volts. So just as an example, take a look at this example circuit. In this circuit, we've actually got three ESD protection measures. The first is this fuse, and this fuse is the first line of defense. So here on the left might be your connection back to, let's say, a connector. If that fuse can withstand the input, then you have a gas discharge tube. So this is your surge arrestor right here. Then we have an inductor. This inductor could also uh, slow down the input pulse, um, but it has to be a high power inductor, of course. Then you have your TVS diode. So this TVS diode is bidirectional. It doesn't necessarily have to be bidirectional for this circuit, but I'm a firm believer that bidirectional is always better than unidirectional. The reason for that is because, of course, if an ESD pulse is received on this ground terminal, then the ground terminal potential could rise above this 5 volt steady potential. And so then you would get current flowing up this direction instead of down this direction. So I think it's always better to use a bidirectional TVS diode rather than a unidirectional TVS diode. But this shows how you could use um, these two components simultaneously in the same system. And then you would just have your connector over here on the left. Now, if you were going to use this gas suppressor with the TVS diode, the layout rules are similar. You would want to place the surge arrestor and the TVS diodes close to the connector where the ESD event might occur. So if you do that, you're going to have the maximum chance to dampen and uh, prevent any of that ESD from reaching over here to this circuit or this integrated circuit that we want to protect. Now, if you're working in flux and you're designing something on your own, this is the path that you would take. But oftentimes, if you're in flux, maybe you are working on a blank project and you're planning to use sub layouts. So what do you do if you're using a sub layout? Well, here in the left part of the screen, if I just search for USB, you'll see that there's a lot of USB receptacles, such as this USB-C receptacle with 3v3 built into it, and it has ESD protection built into it. So if I just take a look briefly at the PCB layout, once this loads, we'll be able to see where those uh, TVS diodes are placed in this sub layout. So here, inside of this sub layout, it's actually not really obvious where they're at. Um, but you can always, of course, right click on this and open, and it'll open up that sub layout. And then you'll be able to really dig in and see exactly what components are in that sub layout. And then you can see exactly where those ESD protection diodes are placed. Now, let's suppose I'm taking a different approach and I'm just going to create a new board using only sub layouts and the sub layouts I choose don't have any ESD protection on them. Well, how do I add ESD protection to that sub layout? So just as an example, take a look at one of my other projects, my interface converter project that I have shown in a couple of other videos. Now, in this interface converter, you can see it's just a box. We don't have any exposed pins. And if we look in the PCB, you can see that this thing is finalized. I'm just picking it up and moving it around as a complete object like any other part. Now, I can't really add in a net connection here on these lines and then draw this over to a TVS diode um, in order to place ESD protection on these connections. So how do I do this? How do I add ESD protection to this portion of the design or to this sub layout? Well, what I need to do is I actually need to open the sub layout, and when it's available in the public library, you can then open that project and take a look at it. And once the project is open, what you can do is you can clone it. So if you clone it, you can then, of course, take that cloned project and add the ESD protection you want into the clone rather than adding it into the, into the original. 
So once this cloned project opens up, I would of course want to take this and just rename it essentially interface converter with ESD protection. So we'll just call it interface converter with ESD. So now here that I have this cloned uh, sub layout, what I can do is then I can just add in my ESD protection exactly where I want it on these two connectors. Then once that modification is made, I can go up here to the main menu, I can then publish it to the library, go back to my new project, and then add in the modified interface converter with ESD into this project, and then I'm off and running. So that gives me two different sub layouts that I can use. I can use the original sub layout or the modified sub layout with ESD protection. And you can do that with any of the sub layouts that are available in the public library. Thanks everyone for watching this video. ESD protection can be a difficult subject sometimes because of course it's related to EMI and EMC. And so far we've only covered the TBS diode or gas discharge tube or other uh, surge protection aspects in terms of the components. But what we haven't covered is grounding and then how that relates to the enclosure. So that'll be a topic for another video. So for now, if you have any questions about TVS diodes, like where to place them, how to select them, make sure to leave those questions in the comments section, and I'll do my best to answer those. Thanks again, everybody, and make sure to hop into Flux and follow along with all of our tutorials. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.